Hi there, is sex a battlefield in your marriage? That's what we're talking about right now. I'm Mary Whitman Ortiz, Christian sex educator, relationship coach, and author. I've been helping people to grow the connection in their relationship for over 20 years. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. You don't want to miss anything. Today's topic is five reasons sex might be a battlefield in your marriage. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Reason number one. Well, maybe before you got married, you didn't settle everything inside of you about what you wanted for sexual intimacy in your marriage. That seems kind of like an, an innocent thought process, but if you grew up in church circles where talking about sex or thinking about sex was taboo, then of course you didn't give yourself permission to have even an internal conversation, much less an external conversation. So that part of your journey is missing. What is reason number two? Maybe you didn't have this conversation with your spouse either because you didn't have the language it wasn't settled inside of you the two of you did not have words that you could agree on that were comfortable because yes sex can be a very taboo topic but there are ways to create a connection where you have your own fun cool language that you use all right those first two reasons we've talked about what about the third reason sex might be a battlefield in your marriage? Well, there is a myth that sex will just happen and it'll be fun and it'll be spontaneous and it doesn't take any work. And yes, I believe that that does happen in marriage and sometimes that is what it looks like in the early years of marriage. But that doesn't mean it's going to be that way every single time. Certainly, sex is something that's worthy of intention and work. And hey, we change as individuals. We have a whole lifespan and a lifelong commitment to a spouse. So that's going to require some adapting and that's okay. What about reason number four, sex might be a battlefield for you? This could have something to do with unrealistic expectations and it really falls on both sides of the spectrum. So it's possible that you saw sex in the media and wow, it was just so over the top and you're like, is that how it's supposed to be? And if that was your expectation, then you might have been disappointed. That that it wasn't wild and crazy and full of passion and let's try every new thing every single time. Ah! Or the other end of the spectrum. Well, maybe you grew up in church circles where everything was suppressed and you really had no idea what to expect. So anything that was just a little bit more than the, the kissing and the touching that you had done in your dating time, then you might have been completely unprepared and thrown off. And you're still wondering, are these things allowed? What is that list that God has for us of everything we get to say yes to? Now, I'm going to give you a fifth reason also. And this is kind of the biggest one of all. Maybe you just didn't know what God intended for sex. And I'm going to give you a biggie here and say, the way God sees sexual intimacy in marriage is not just a physical act. I mean, animals have sex, right? But we are created spirit, soul, and body, and so we have this whole person that we get to bring to sexual intimacy. And truly, that is how God designed it. And I have this great acronym I want to make sure that you remember, and it will reframe how you see sex. So I believe that God sees 
sexual intimacy in marriage as a gift that he gives to us. And so let's look at that word gift and G stands for good. If you go back to the book of Genesis, you can see how when God created thing, he says it was good. And when he made man in his image, he said it was good. And there's so many other points to understand with that, but just hold on that God says sex and marriage is good. And what about the I? Oh, that's about intimacy. And when we create those intimate connections and we invite the whole person to participate, woohoo, that is amazing. And the F, this one's gonna be really interesting for you to, to kind of grasp. It's the word fierce. So the bond that you create, that leaving and cleaving process for oneness, wow, it makes you fierce, strong, strong enough to face anything. I mean, sexual intimacy in marriage is like the super glue that holds everything together and the T. The T stands for timeless. When we bring the fun to sexual intimacy, when we bring the, the security of commitment there, then it, it sets us up for everything that we need for a lifetime of satisfaction. So that is the gift that God has for you in your marriage. And as you dive into that more, I know that God's going to bring you more understanding. And if that sounds like something that just really speaks to you where you are, then you've got to catch my next video. Why don't Christians talk about sex? Thanks so much for joining me. And remember, God wants to lavish his love upon every area of your life, including your sexual intimacy in marriage.